Okay, we are time. It is time to get started. Uh, we're good to go. My name is Randall Warnes, and I am with Enterprise UAS. And today we have my guy Chris Kenny from Wingtro. We're going to be talking about uh, the leader in VTOL technology, going for the next 45 minutes of uh, of basically giving you information of what this orange beast can do. Um, like I mentioned, if you have questions, put them into the questions panel throughout the uh, throughout the presentation so that we can make sure to answer the questions that come up in your head. Uh, this session is recorded and we will get that posted to our YouTube within like 24, 48 hours if you wanna review, share with other members of your team, et cetera. But without further ado, I'm going to bring in Chris and we will get started. Uh, Chris, do you wanna tell a little bit about yourself and, and give some background to what you do at Wingtra? Hi Randall, thanks for uh, having me on. So my name is Chris Ketty. I am the U.S. Channel Manager for the Pacific Region for Wintra. <clears throat> so primarily I handle uh, sales and resellers throughout California, Oregon, Alaska, and Hawaii. So I'm the envy of the sales team because I get to live, go to all the nice places and fly around. So that's perfect. But, and, oh, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, so I came to Wingtra in January. I uh, kind of took a roundabout way to get here. Uh, my background's actually in, was in subsurface imaging and with GPR locating a uh, number of different technologies. And the pandemic came, made me rethink my career and decided I wanted to map something easier. And mapping something above ground was a lot better than mapping something below ground, I can tell you that. Uh, perfect. And I think that GPR is stuff that has come up in, in my drone experiences over the last eight years, and I don't know a ton about it. So we probably won't touch on it today. But if you do want to talk to someone that has some ground penetrating radar experience, Chris is, a, I guess, a guy <laughs> as, as a tertiary reason to, to reach out uh, other than him being a cool guy and also representing Wingtra uh, to, to reach out on that uh, on that front. And uh, I'm Randall Warnes. I've been in the drone industry about eight years or a little over eight years now, uh, with most of my time being spent between DJI, Lear, uh, a short stint at Autel, and then I've been at Enterprise UAS for a while. Uh, if you don't know Enterprise UAS, we're one of the larger uh, resellers of drone technology in the United States. Uh, we're kind of a consortium of four brands, including DSLR Pros, Aerial Media Pros, uh, Empire RC, and DroneFly. Uh, so if you uh, have been following what we're doing, we basically spend quite a bit of time educating on what drone technology can do, both on the use case front as well as product specific stuff. And, and that's how Chris and I are together today to talk to you about Wingtra and, and what their VTOLs can do. So Chris, I'm just gonna kind of walk through this as far as presenting questions uh, about how uh, how you would describe Wingtra and, and that's kind of the, how the flow will go. But can you tell a little bit about Wingtra's background? Uh, obviously, you know, for those that know it, they know it's a Swiss company, but how do you operate in the rest of the world and really what was the, the background of putting this technology together? Yeah, so initially Wingtra started off as a graduate research project uh, for a group of guys out of ETH in Zurich. So they have a fantastic robotics program. And they were initially looking at creating a drone uh, delivery or drone transport. So that's where kind of Wingtra came from. It's wing transport and it got shortened. And so they looked at the world and they realized that the, the world didn't need another drone delivery vehicle. And they decided to, what they were really good at is digitizing information. And since the world was kind of moving in that direction, they started focusing on capturing information and digitizing it for the world. So gotcha. we, so Go our, uh, yep, yeah, our, Headquarters is based in Zurich. We have people all around the world, I believe, I believe 80 countries or so. Uh, we have over 100 uh, people. The majority of them are engineers. Uh, so we're kind of a product first uh, company. Ideally, we're trying to create products to solve problems. And we do our sales team. Again, we have a a team of about 10 people in the US, all over uh, North America. We have some people in South America. We have two groups of customer success people, both uh, based on the Western Hemisphere and then the Eastern Hemisphere. 
Gotcha. And when I built this deck, I was looking through stuff, and and there's this mention of the hundred Wingtronauts, and maybe I'm I'm second guessing what that means. Are Wingtronauts customers? Or are Wingtronauts people that work for the company Wingtra? <laughs> Wingtronauts is an internal name that we call ourselves. So sure. there are employees. Okay. Well, uh, for the next slide, ignore my misuse of the word Wingtronaut, but uh, it was mentioned, and I basically think that one of the things that stands out to me as far as looking at Wingtra from afar, not being necessarily a user, because then you you have a different experience with Wingtra, but looking at the community that Wingtra has built, it seems as though the customers that are flying Wingtra products are very proud of being a part of the Wingtra community. And it seems like, you know, these kind of images where someone is posing with their airframe and, and covering uh, social media with them is not normal. Can you talk a little bit about how Wingtra builds that community with their customers? Yeah, as I was saying that we kind of focus on uh, solving problems. We also really care about, you know, drones for good, uh, make, making sure that drones are used for like appropriate purposes and whatnot. For example, we just had an Earth Day uh, promotion where we took applications from around the world and gave out three drones to uh, either NGOs or community projects. We work a lot with like say the Nature Conservancy or other like community things to monitor the environment. And we, because we care so much about research, we offer a pretty steep discount for universities or research-based organizations. That's good to know. I, I think that that's something to kind of put an asterisk next to because I think you know what one thing I like to discover in conversations like this is ways that uh, you know the the manufacturer I'm talking to is different, and I know that EDU programs are pretty normal. However, I think that being willing to kind of foster and publicly like announce programs like that is pretty unique. So if you are part of an EDU, you are doing research. Uh, Wintra may be an airframe that you want to dive into. Uh, but again, the community that seems to be built, seeing these orange things flying all over the place and, and uh, how proud people are to, to be uh, representing the technology, it goes probably goes to both the deliverables that they're able to create, as well as the relationship that they have with the company. And I think that that shows uh, you know, a lot of confidence that you were in working with Wingtra. Um, so uh, as far as well, first thing I'll touch on is it, this This slide says why Wingtra, and, and there are differentiators between what Wingtra does in the unmanned space as a whole, as well as what Wingtra does uh, on the VTOL side. So maybe you could take both like uh, both approaches, and we're going to go deeper dive into each of these areas, but what makes Wingtra different as a company or or as a, as a hardware? Uh, as a company, we kind of covered how much we care about, you know, furthering like the, the human condition really right. but uh if you're looking at just the drone so we like to say we map farther larger longer and more accurately than you know other drones so like i had mentioned earlier one thing about my background is i didn't have a traditional drone background but because the engineering team had put so much effort it made you know, using the drone and tackling giant projects so incredibly easy. And for me, like my main goal in business is really to help others succeed and make money and to further their businesses and whatnot. And the Waitra is a perfect tool because the interface is so incredibly easy to use for planning and, you know, the flight is autonomous, et cetera. But you know, people who are afraid to use drone programs because of either like learning to pilot, things like that, or the uh, project planning, like Wingtra really just takes that out of your hands and makes it not foolproof, but pretty close. So that's kind of as a whole, like if you're looking to uh, map anything, you know, large areas, like we'll get to it later, but if you like, four or five hundred acres in an hour, something that would take, you know, a smaller drone significantly longer to do. It could take us an hour. Right. And, and I believe that this is the only slide that we talk about this, but the blue SUAS distinction, uh, what, I mean, you you want customers to have confidence in, in working with a manufacturer 
and being able to envision long-term uh, long-term integration within their program. But why did Wingtra go for becoming one of the Blue uh, UAS members? And, and can you tell a little bit about that? You know, the Blue UAS program, uh, it allowed, so being on the Blue UAS list allows us to work on federal uh, bases and lands and things like that. Uh, it was a, about a, over a two-year process to get certified. We had to be some really stringent security specs and uh, where we sourced our materials, uh, kind of looking the best for both, you know, our country and security. And so the Blue UAS includes, you know, encrypted telemetry and uh, government-approved software for safety and, you know, air gap systems and all, like a whole a whole bunch. So I believe there's where there's not very many people on the uh, the blue list, right. and we are one of the we were the I believe the latest addition to the list. Right. Well, I think you know knowing that process, it's it's amazing that you guys went through it, and uh, I think that we'll talk about use cases. But blue UAS, I think people typically think about you know, public safety, law enforcement, potentially defense. And, and um, in what you were saying before about drones for good, there's no intention for Wingtra to be used for defense, but there is avenues for public safety. Is that correct? Yeah, we have a no warfighter policy in the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, we don't, as a company, we don't want the drone used in combat. Uh, but for like search and rescues, uh, border security, if you're looking to help you know, make sure that human lives are saved and things like that, that we're all about that. Uh, I do want to make a quick mention about the Blue UAS. I know I had said, you know, for federal use, but there are, for example, I work with uh, people all over uh, California and Hawaii. And like for on the, on Oahu and Hawaii, they have tons of military bases. So if you're doing something, even like a shoreline mapping project, you're gonna come into areas where you're gonna to need to fly within a restricted area. And we, in our uh, planning software, nothing is like uh, blacked out. So you, we trust that with your uh, 107, you're able to decide on where to do the planning and the Blue UAS allows you to get the permissions to fly into, uh, you know, more secure areas. Yeah. That you, even though you might not be planning the whole mission there, but it might intersect on some portion of it. Gotcha. That's good to know. Uh, so let's talk about this map area, uh, sorry, map everywhere concept. Uh, because the Wingtra is a VTOL, I think that, many people most people would know that stands for vertical takeoff and landing um i mean why why would you say that it allows you to fly more places can you just give kind of a brief background you know of layman's term on vtol flight yeah so what happens is <laughs> i i think for most of the demos once they look at the data they're all excited most of the demos people just want to see it take off and land <laughs> so it's a, it's a real it's a really interesting process so it, it shoots straight up and then it transitions into a horizontal flight and then when it goes into a horizontal flight and then it will loiter or go in circles till it gets to the right altitude and then you're flying at the most efficient uh, manner at that point and then once it's done collecting its uh, data it comes back it returns to a vertical position and comes down what that does is creates a, a pretty small area of landing, <laughs> which is about, you know, under two meters. So you're looking like six to seven feet radius uh, that you're looking at where this thing is going to land. So if you're in a tight area, like in this picture, it's a trail yard, uh, forest lanes. We have a really some really good use cases on our website based uh, where the like Cal Fire was using uh, our drone and they only hit because of the tree size they weren't able to use other uh, fixed wing drones and because we we're able to take off at very small areas like it really helped us and we and we do a lot of testing in the the swiss alps and a lot of those roads are actually pretty small so there's not a ton of places to take off so that's kind of where a lot of it came from gotcha 
and then uh, I think that we threw this in here, meaning uh, to kind of talk about one of the more difficult things, like you were mentioning, being in a stockyard. Um, when you're doing, uh, I guess, when Wingtrill was doing research on what pilots needed, the ability to map long uh, long duration or, or large areas, but have this this safe landing spot. Was that after feedback from other airframes, or was that something that just for them to even consider drones, VTOL was the only answer? Do you know that? No, that that was a little bit before my time. I think that, yeah, I can't honestly answer that, but I have a, a nice little story about different ways that this actually helps. We recently sold uh, several uh, U uh, Wingtras in Africa to a mining operation. And what happened was like, you know, what really sold them is that where the pilots were staying was off site. And it was like one or two kilometers away. So what they could do is just walk out of their uh, house, put it on the ground, it flies off, it does the mission, it comes right back. They don't have to get any PPE. They don't have to put themselves in any dangerous situations. Like it's just so incredibly easy that it, you know, it's also, you know, keeping them safer and healthy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, hold on. Okay, so as far as covering large areas, I think that one of the things that I was I was getting at, but maybe, uh, you know, we don't know whether, you know, chicken or the egg situation. Uh, when you compare a VTOL to a fixed wing, uh, there's the obvious, uh, you know, you can't take off in a vertical way. So you're, you need much more ground clearance for takeoff and landing. And for multi-copters, you're not covering as much area, but you've probably seen a slide like this, this is comprised of, of your material. What kind of story do you tell as far as being able to cover uh, how much land, uh, how much distance you can cover with a VTOL airframe and how it compares to traditional uh, fixed wing and, and multi-rotors? So one thing I'd like to point out is a recent uh, demo with a large uh, DOT in my area is we were, they were doing, a, they were building a road <clears throat> And what happened was they would try to do a project progression and they were using a multi-copter drone and it would take, you know, all weeks to run this whole section of road. And, you know, it wasn't really good to keep track of deliveries and prog uh, project progression and, you know, give updates to shareholders, et cetera. So what we did is we set up in a middle point of the road, launched the, the wing truck created a corridor where we mapped this whole thing in like 45 minutes, which uh, like the multi-copter drone took, you know, the better part of four or five days to do. And so that way they could constantly use it for project progression. So they could share it with their team, they can map deliveries, they can see how much earth is moved. And because it doesn't take all day, it only takes about an hour, they can do it daily and get daily updates, which also helps if there is a, you know, we're, we're living in a litigious society. So there's always people trying to make money off of larger corporations, whether they're like, oh, I delivered this or I moved this much dirt. By having, say, something like the Wingtra available is you will have a constant, you are able to constantly monitoring what's happening during that project and not put that much effort into it. So if there's any issues, you're able to have the data to back you up. And, and maybe we're gonna cover this later, but as far as flying the wing trip, it's all mission plan based. Are you doing anything with the six during flight at all? Or is it basically set it and forget it? You basically monitor the aircraft visual line of sight and, and what's being captured. And then once it lands uh, is when you really re-engage re with the airframe. Yeah, so once you do the, the the mission planning, you just push play and it goes. Like goes up, does the data collection, and it comes down. You are, so your main responsibility while it's flying, again, is like you said, is to monitor the airspace, keep visual line of sight. Uh, if there is an issue, you can uh, take it over, uh, but you really, there shouldn't be outside of something coming within the airspace. There's no need for you to take it over. And even when it's landing, say, where you're landing, somebody had parked a car, like right where you're landing. Sometimes that happens on a construction site. You mm -hmm. can take it over and then move the 
uh, winter over and just push, uh, you know, land on site. And it will take it completely over. A lot of times with pilots that want to take over the control if it's extremely windy and things like that. But, you know, the operations algorithm works significantly faster than human reflexes. So just let it do its thing. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so um, as far as spec, spec stuff, this 59-minute 59 minute flight time, uh what is what is kind of the the parameters that keep a, a VTOL from from basically being able to achieve that 59 is that accurate or or is that give or you know, plus minus five minutes what does the the flight time actually look like for for the VTOL so the 59 minutes is with our uh red edge uh red edge micasense camera payload so you if you're looking at a like a like a ground sampling distance of like 0.7 centimeters or something like that then you're looking more at 500 acres at 54 minutes uh but if you only if you need a three centimeter per pixel uh then you can get the 990 acres and other things that might affect that flight time is altitude so you're looking closer to 55 minutes with either the Sony RX, RX1, R2, which is a 42 megapixel camera, or the Sony A6100, which is a 24 megapixel camera. And I, before moving to California, like I lived in Reno, where about 5,000 feet, where it was extremely windy. And you're looking at about 47 minutes of flight time at that height. Gotcha. And so, when you talk about uh, when you talk about uh, mapping drones, fixed wing or or uh, VTOL, is it really what someone should expect as far as the acreage they can cover? Because that's really the the objective. Or uh, is flight time still kind of uh, a point of conversation? Which uh, how how do you frame conversations about VTOL? So when I'm out, so I'm a field guy. And so like a field and business guy. So I talk at time in the field, uh, what that costs the company, et cetera. So it's project based. They're looking at what they can get done within a certain amount of time. So they might be able, so sometimes when we're talking about comparing VTOLs to multi-rotor, we talk in battery changes. <laughs> and so like where one battery change, another drone might be six battery changes. <laughs> which adds time. Uh, it's one flight versus 16 flights. So the, a lot of people speak at different uh, times. A lot of times, like you'll see people advertise, would be like, oh, ours is 59 minutes or ours is 90 minutes and ours mm -hmm. is blah, blah, blah. And it's a lot of times it's like with the payload, without the payload. So you don't really know what that actually means <laughs> until like, you know, we the information that we give out is what it could do in a normal setting right and you can expect to get between 54 and 59 minutes every time and when i'm going out in the field like if you're not super high in super high altitude and stuff like that uh one thing you can when i say when i go out in the field especially when i'm working with say construction or mining people like it works <laughs> like they're like what are some features i'm like it works all the time and right. so it's not like you're jumping in your car driving 100 miles out into a remote location and you launch it and you know then you have an issue no right so that's you know the best thing i could say for any piece of equipment out there is you know it works and it gobbles up large projects quickly yeah, that's good to know. And I think that in the drone world, it's just really hard to look at a spec sheet and really know what you're going to get as far as a deliverable. So that's why I asked that is if, you know, you're framing it that you can cover this amount of space, it doesn't really matter how uh, how long, it's just really what the deliverable is. So I think that Wingtra has done a good job at making kind of reliable expectations for the airframe uh, that, that you represent. Um, so this is talking about uh, kind of like the cost comparison of uh, doing the using different aircrafts. Do you know this story specifically? Uh, no, I don't actually. Okay. <laughs> like I, I've 
been told it, but it's not on the top of my mind, so I apologize for that. But no, I think this is, a, this is a we have on our website. Uh, it might be on your website or soon to be is an ROI calculator where you're able to enter in uh, your project parameters. Uh, you know, area, cost of labor, all that. It will give you an accurate representation of how what you can expect from a Wingtra doing the project or, you know, various other popular multi-rotor drones and versus like terrestrial methods, et cetera. But, you know, what's nice about that is you are entering the data. So it's not numbers that some, you know, engineer is making up. Like you could just look at your past projects and enter in, you know, it took us X amount of time to, you know, to survey an acre. And then you put the same thing in for the wing trail and you're like, wow, I could have done that significantly faster. So one thing that uh, in, the, in the drone space, solar has kind of taken hold of, uh, solar inspection has taken hold of drones and really like transformed that industry where it's a standard. When you're looking at these comparisons of traditional methods, which is, you know, putting stakes in the ground and, and whatnot, versus using a, a VTOL, the ROI seems pretty obvious. Is it like getting to the point where drone usage in the surveying space is becoming overwhelmingly popular? Or where do you think we're at is in terms of that iceberg? <laughs> I think iceberg is a good way to refer to it. And, you know, I don't want to step on myself in uh, assume what a surveyor might say, because I'm pretty sure anything I say will be wrong. But in my experience, uh, it has, I think people are seeing the incredible amount of savings that drone surveying can uh, have over terrestrial methods. But if you speak, when I speak to a lot of like surveyors in the field or within these construction companies, whatever, they're still like standard surveying practices that they are doing for their setup with the base stations and uh, creating known points and whatnot that help, you know, tighten up their surveys. So if there is a certain mixture of both uh, drone survey with terrestrial methods. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't, I've been in the thermal world really heavily for the last like six, seven years. And so I didn't really touch survey mapping a lot. I've known that, you know the the world is being transformed by this technology especially in in the geospatial world so if my questions come across as ignorant it's it, they're genuine no no. Uh, no 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 it's fair like i i had just been uh like personally like schooled by surveyors so like it makes me a little gun shy what gotcha. i have to say for them i understand uh, all right, so then let's talk about the accuracy. Um, and what I do know about surveyors is they're all about this uh, ground sampling distance and and really just how many pixels, uh, how many, how the distance per pixel. Um, how are you achieving this better accuracy, especially because it seems like you're flying at a higher altitude in most cases? Yeah, so the, you know, it comes down to the resolution of the camera and you know, the higher the resolution, the higher the accuracy with our 42 megapixel uh, sensor, it's extremely accurate. And we could adjust the different flight heights uh, if you want to increase the or decrease the ground sampling distance. What's nice about the project planning software is you enter in what you want the ground sampling distance to be, and it will tell you what what the flight will be like what the height is. So you don't have to do any like versions or things like that. Like it will like set that up for you. Uh, what's interesting too, is we have a, we did two projects, one in Zurich and one in uh, Arizona uh, to get down to centimeter per pixel accuracy. And, you know, again, it's a workflow. It's a combination of base station or course network tying into the PPK and the post process. Yeah, and so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about payloads. It's maybe it's shortly. This came up, and and I collected this from your from your uh, materials that you have. And it, can you talk about like the the number of points that are collected versus the traditional uh, GLONASS GNSS survey, whatever? Uh, what what is this 
saying? I mean, what is this talking about drones in general, or is this particular to Wingtra as far as gathering this number of points? Uh, this is similar to uh, in drones in particular. They're collecting other uh, significant amount of data points. Uh, I think where it comes along is the difference went between uh, like lidar versus photogrammetry, and you look at the different like data points in that. You know, with uh, photogrammetry, uh, you are able to you know collect per like square meter. You know, something like twenty thousand points of reference. Uh, with a LIDAR, depending on with a higher end man, like aircraft LIDAR or you know, something around like, you know, 90 grand or more expensive, you're gonna get significant you're gonna get a similar um, level of you know points. But like with a more entry level LIDAR, then you're gonna get uh, you know 50 to 200 points per square meter, but not significantly uh, uniformly distributed. Uh, but also, you know, that takes an account, like, is there vegetation, what's in the area, what you're looking for. But as this picture goes, this is just saying, like, when you're doing uh, the drone survey, because of the, you know, the rate of capture, like, the, and the photos overlaying themselves, like, you're getting hundreds, thousands of points, like, even within a small area. Gotcha. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what kind of data you're capturing. And this is kind of just an introductory slide. So I'll go to what actual payloads you have. And we talked just before this that uh, Wingtra has introduced different RGB payloads. So maybe the models you're seeing here are a bit different. But can you talk through kind of the first side of the RGB data capture, uh, what payloads are, are on there, um, and how they're supported? Yeah. So What's really nice about the Wingtra, especially for me, uh, when I'm like, you know, business guy in the field, <laughs> like is the ease of use. It's how to just, it's four screws and the screws actually don't leave the payloads and just pop out. So it takes, you know, a minute or less to like switch out the payload. You put the four screws in, pop, oh, take the four screws out or unscrew them pop it out, put a new one in, and plug it in. It's super easy. Uh, so when you're looking at the payloads, we have a 42 megapixel full frame uh, Sony RX R1, R2. Uh, that is our flagship camera. That's the one that, you know, probably 90% of our accounts get. Um, we have a more introductory level camera, which is actually the Sony A6100, which is a 24 megapixel camera. And we have the same A6100, but on an oblique mount for 3D reconstruction and stuff like that. There's actually a super good uh, video of a, well, it's a model that we made flying the city of Zurich in six hours that we made a 3D model of using the A6100 uh, oblique mount. Gotcha. And so you mentioned the four screws and the swapping. There's also uh, the ability to add uh, multispectral cameras, uh, and these are all uh, manufactured by uh, MicaSense. And I, yeah. what we're missing here is the Red Edge P, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, so kind of talk about uh, you know for those that maybe don't have a lot of experience with multispectral data capture, how is it different from capturing on the RGB side? And is the workflow very similar as far as working within the app and those sorts of things for capture of, of multispectral? So the lucky, the good thing about Wingtra is we have a team of people to talk about multispectral. Uh, I am not the best person to speak to it, honestly. Uh, but it, the workflow is similar. Uh, it's the four screws you put it in. There's a additional top cover that lets uh, sun through. You have to do a regulating uh, picture, like pre-flight and post-flight, to help kind of uh, align it. But what's really interesting is yesterday I was part of a presentation with different, you know, agricultural software. But the amazing things you can do with multispectral is you know, flying over an orchard and you can see the different levels of, uh, you know, growth or how, like where the trees are being watered. You know, you're able to look at the, the different 
you know, spectral images and just, you know, you're able to just make decisions. Like, like coming from like a farmer, the idea is like, hey, I have a, a orchard of 3,000 trees and these 120 sporadically throughout the uh, orchard are not as healthy as the other ones based on the multispectral imagery. What's Then they can go and look at it and find out that there's an irrigation problem opposed to you know going through and just looking at each tree they're not it's that whole seeing the forest through the trees uh you know parable right but you know like i said like this is not my area of expertise but i have worked with it slightly the workflow is very similar and it's still very easy and so basically when you swap payloads the the airframe recognizes that you're using the same application and and basically the plus play concept is the same. It just captures yeah. data in a different, with yeah, a different. That's right. Gotcha, cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, another thing that kind of going through your materials is how much uh, focus there was on support. Um, I think that Wingtra has one of the most like comprehensive uh, information about your products and troubleshooting your products that I've seen on the internet, but uh, is there anything more to be said about this as far as how you support your customers? I am constantly amazed by just the expertise and just the quality of our support staff. You know, just talking to some of them, it's just things they have done, like, you know, working remote sensing in Antarctica, like being thoroughly involved in the development of different uh, drone platforms and things like that. It's it's a it's amazing, like the things they can do. What's interesting about Wingtra is we are a data collection platform. Like that's what we do, right? Mm. Uh, but you know, we do that efficiently, probably better than everybody else. Most of the issues related, not issues, but like complications that people will have is on the support of the software side. And even though we're not a software company, our our support staff, and we work closely with different software providers, are able to help out, you know, people, you know, set up their base stations or how to make adjustments in within this software, mm -hmm. and which is really interesting. So we end up supporting everything outside of Wingtra because, like I said, like the Wingtra works. <laughs> and so, you know, it goes up, collects, it, collects the data, like it, and then the upload into the geotagging is extremely simple. And the upload into different softwares is very simple. And it's just a lot of, you know, tweaking, which our, our support staff is very knowledgeable about. Gotcha. And, and to contact the support staff, I'm sure is pretty straightforward. Uh, phone calls, emails, live chat, things yeah. like that. Yeah, you can just email them at uh, support at wingtra.com and that will create a ticket. And like I said, we have two, we have a team in uh, the US and we also have a team in Europe. So around the clock, you know, people are monitoring it. Perfect. Um, so I think there's another thing about support here, um, just kind of uh, kind of the life cycle of stuff. But I'm going to skip this just by in in consideration yeah. of time. Um, damage protection, it's probably yeah. pretty straightforward, but it is something that Wingtra I think has really yeah. perfected. If you go through and and read through how they cover their pilots and make sure that you can c keep flying. Um, about the app, is there anything like uh, in using the app that is different than other airframes or is the their you know comments on what differentiates Wingtra's app from from other apps you've seen in the in the unmanned space one I you know I think that there are aspects of our app which is different than say other one but as a whole you know it's relatively similar um, but it's just the ease of use, like how extremely easy it is that they have thought out to create uh, mission plannings. You can plan in the office. You can, you know, we've uh, helped like the support staff had planned some like flights for people in, uh, you know, South Africa, you know, <laughs> thousands of miles away. And it's just incredibly easy to use. Gotcha. And, uh, 
I mean, that's obviously what's looked for when we talk about this, which is the applications that Wing Trust typically used. Um, I think that we're going to cover just these three uh, pretty quickly, but um, one area that I've seen personally, Wing Trust stuff is is a lot of construction stuff, which I guess it, it goes into surveying and mapping. Can you talk a little bit about uh, where and how Wing Trust airframes really unlock the ability for surveyors uh, when they're on a construction site? Uh, you know, you can start with the VTOL being able to uh, take off in, you know, small areas covering large projects, uh, you know, just the amount of time. Something to think about with like large construction project is that like project monitoring is doing stockpiles. Also, you know, paying attention to how much like cut and fills, how much dirt is moved. But, you know, by a lot of these things can be accomplished with other drones, but you're using so much extra time. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, do you want to spend the additional 15, 20 hours using a different drone than a Wintra and you're sacrificing that time doing other projects? You're not spending time with your family. Like there's so, you know, that's one thing we can't get back is you know time that's the one thing that you know uh like i said the flight planning there's some things that are different and unique but just the efficiency that we uh captured data and what that efficiency means in terms of like your roi your bottom line even your life like the amount of time that you get back because you have all these projects we all have too many projects and you know what the wing trade does is allows you to knock out all those projects in an extremely efficient uh, manner. Perfect. And, and then uh, I'm assuming mining very similar. We're talking about stockpiles, you know, like looking pre-blast, yep. post-blast. Uh, yep. That that's kind of the the major function of of wing trade. Have you seen anything else in the mining space other than those things that that have been used for uh, used the wing trade has been used for? No, yeah, mining is probably where we are probably the leader uh, in the sense that like because of our application, our complete setup, it's the perfect tool for mining. And you're, you're correct, it's stockpile management, uh, cut and fills, uh, post blast, pre blast, post blast. Same thing, uh, if you, on a slightly side note, if you want to include landfills, it's, you know, it's the perfect way to measure uh, you know the life expectancy of you know landfills and things like that as well perfect uh so uh, i have a one here for environmental stuff except it seems like it's the same photos as the construction so i don't know uh where that went wrong but as far as environmental uh, applications can you just give a brief like rundown of things that you've seen the wing tree use for for you know water conservation things like that Exactly. Uh, water conservation, watching, um, regulating who is actually taking water, uh, mapping shorelines, finding uh, the Nature Conservancy is doing, they just had a nice post on uh, LinkedIn about the Dominican Republic and using it to look at reefs and whatnot. It's, you know, the thing is when you're looking at a Wintra, uh, it's not what can it do, it's like what can't it do? Like, you know, they're, it's really what your mind if think about what you could do if you could collect a whole bunch of imagery extremely fast if you had a complete overview like you know the world is your oyster at that moment mm -hmm. uh so it there was uh this information that was in some of the stuff you sent as far as like who's using your technology and i think that yeah in the, the drone space it's very difficult to find brands that will raise their hand and it's becoming a little easier but that will raise their hand and saying we're using drones uh these specific drones because of geopolitics and stuff like that the relationships that you've built with your customers we already mentioned is very close um but i just think that it's important to see brands that are willing to say yeah we're using wingtra we're finding value in it um and you know that is really one of the greatest testaments to you uh doing things right um so for those that aren't familiar there's quite a few of of mining companies on here semex is one of the largest uh, cement companies for uh pores and construction sites what what other like use cases before we we jump kind of into the conclusion of this 
are you seeing and, and who would you encourage to really consider Wingtra uh, for, for their needs? You know, anyone from, like I primarily work a lot with construction, but you know, anyone who has a project that's over, you know, 80 acres that, or you have multiple smaller projects that you need to like knock out in succession, uh, whether it be agriculture or projects that are within a certain area, uh, you know, anything that has a large scope, you know, okay. if you look at a major, all those kind of, most of the DOTs, uh, you know, as you see here, like the largest mining companies in the world uh, use us, you know, the, the Army Corps of Engineers, going back to the, the blue UAS. So, and when you, um, when I think of surveying projects, they could range from, you know, smaller to larger. Do you, do you say only large scope or do you find people using the, the Wingtra platform for uh, smaller scope projects as well, or is that just like if they have it, they'll use it? Um, you know, does, in a small, when you have small area to cover, does the wing trust still perform? Is I guess what I would ask. You know, I think there's a point of diminishing returns. Uh, there's always you got to think about using the right tool for the right job. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going under, like I don't know, between fifty and eighty acres or something like that that you know we're probably not the right like system for you you could use other multi copter uh multi rotor uh multi rotor drones because you know it's not what i liked about working with you euas and you randall is that you guys have a selection of different drones because there's it's like your toolbox you have different drones for different jobs mm. so you know it's not one we're not competing with you know multi-rotor drones it's completely it's something different we're doing a different job gotcha um all right so we're going to talk about this in the q a stuff as far as processing data so i'm going to uh, skip this for now um if you guys do have any questions about wing Trader going forward if you do want to get a demo set up or anything like that if you contact sales at dslrpros.com which is one of the brands under Enterprise UAS. Uh, we'll get out to you. We'll uh, talk talk your ear off as, uh, on the technology. So that is the way to get a hold of us. Um, and we're going to go into questions and answers. Here's my email. And Chris, I didn't put yours up here. Uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you, whether uh, email or LinkedIn? Uh, LinkedIn works really well. Uh, also, my email is pretty simple. It's chris.kenny at wingtra.com. So <laughs> outside of the dots and the com, you have most of it right there. Perfect. So that's chris.kenny at wingtra.com. If you want to reach out to Chris, uh, mine is randall at enterpriseuas.com. So we're going to go into questions. And one of the questions that I saw come up was about software and processing. And we mentioned the flight software making the process very easy. You make yeah. your, you know, you draw a polygon or whatever around the space you want to fly and you hit play, basically. But when the Wingtra comes down and you want to put that data into something, does Wingtra provide a data processing platform or is this all done uh, with a third party uh, software? Yeah, so we really like to say we're software agnostic. I think, you know how I mentioned that there's different tools for different jobs uh, when it comes to drones. The same for, you know, software. There's cert if you're like mining construction, like propellers, like fantastic with agriculture, you know, there's aerobatics and like kicks 4D fields, uh, you know, you're doing 3D stuff. There's Bentley context capture, uh, Esri. Like, there's so many different softwares that you know. Like I said, we're a data capture solution, and we're software agnostic. So I think it's we could help lead you to different uh, platforms. For example, uh, we had some interest in doing some California shoreline mapping. So I reached out to our Hawaii, one of our uh, you know, friends in Hawaii, they're like, hey, what's your suite of software that you're using? So they're able to, you know, make suggestions based on what they've done and then we can, you know, pass that along. So we're kind of creating this uh, environment of like participation and collaboration. And mm -hmm. as for software, you know, we're the best at, you know, data capture. And we know the best in software and we can help point you in the right way. Got, and so as a follow-up to that, someone asked the question about basically the, the payload that you would use for capturing things. And I'm just going to read this question verbatim. 
uh, with 3D model camera, would you also need to fly a separate mission with a traditionally mounted camera to get a quality, accurate ortho photo and elevation model? So basically, do you see uh, you know professionals using your stuff, switching cameras and getting a secondary uh, take of the mission, or can you get it all with one of the payloads when you're doing 3D modeling? Well, it is the same camera. So I guess they're talking about the position of the camera. No, they should be able to do it with the oblique camera. Like if, if they're trying to get a more accurate, then they might go with the 42 megapixel, like instead of the 24 at an oblique angle. Okay. Um, another question is whether Wingtra is ready for part 107's beyond line of sight rules. So I guess because a VTOL and, and uh, long duration, long distance craft is is ready made for beyond visual line of sight. How is Wingtra participating in getting ready for allowing more people to use the technology VV loss? So all so all of our drones are remote ID ready. So I believe all drones by next September, I believe, have to have some version of remote ID. So all of our drones are remote ID ready, which means it's just kind of a software install. So we do have like something that could broadcast on the, the wing at the moment, which is if not enabled. And so once uh, that remote ID is put in place, we just can turn that on. So that will allow us to kind of get into that uh, BV loss. Perfect. Uh, so that, I mean, there's not any other questions that are on the list. I'm going to sit tight for a few seconds and see if there's anything else. If you have questions, now's the time to ask. We got Chris here uh, and we're here to help. So I'll leave it open for a few minutes. But Chris, I do want to say thank you for coming and, and bringing your expertise and your knowledge about Wingtra uh, to this presentation. I think that in the in the world of drones there's places to get uh get information generally it's a lot of spec sheet stuff and and not so much like anecdotal conversational and i appreciate you being willing to kind of take things as they come uh whether questions from me or questions from the crowd but it looks like we have dried up on questions so uh anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up chris one thing i would just like to point out is you know when i during the pandemic times, like we all had difficult, you know, employment and the world seemed kind of like bleak. And what was really important to me was to find a company that, you know, had a fantastic product and genuinely cared about both its users and its employees. And, you know, I can't stress enough, like how much Wingtra, you know, cares about its employees, its end users, and because of that caring, you know, the employees try hard to make solve the problems of the end users, the customer support tries hard, you know, we are extremely open to, you know, commentary and, or suggestions we have, you can go in like candy and make suggestions on, hey, we, we like this, and with when people, go on that and they upvote different uh, suggestions, like that goes directly to our product team, which, you know, then will go into the roadmap. So all of our, you know, progress, uh, you know, innovations and stuff like that are driven by what, you know, our end users need. So it's not us sitting in a, like a shell thinking, I think this would be good. <laughs> no, it's you know it's directly from our end users saying, hey, we want this, and we have a team of incredibly smart people back in Zurich that are just knocking this stuff out. Right, and I will say to that that voice of customer is one of the most important things for a manufacturer. Me being a part of one for a long time. So if you have watched this presentation or been following Wingtro for a while, or if you have a problem that you're trying to solve and you're not sure whether this does solve that problem, feel free to reach out to myself. Randall Enterprise UAS.com or Chris dot Kenny at wingtra.com and, and let us know the things you're trying to accomplish because that's the way that we progress, that's the way we learn, and that's also the way that technology improves is is through that voice of customer. Would you uh would you echo that, Chris? Yeah, well, hundred percent. Perfect. Well, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for everyone that uh 
was here and, and uh, allowed us to give you more information about the Wingtra product. I hope to be seeing more of you soon. And Chris, obviously, you and I will be working closely together. Uh, so it's good to get this out of the way and more to come. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Randall. All right, brother. Take care. See you later, guys.